then I realized something, chat. What is a dragon fire Pokemon that dragon dances? It just doesn't make any sense. Excalibur is tankier than Garchomp, has more attack than Dragonite, has more speed than Dragonite, and still keeps Dragon Dance. How is it not winning every Pokemon battle ever? And the weird thing is, Dragonite has had moments of also just being, like, the best Pokemon. Once it got multi-scale, it's setting up a Dragon Dance, and it's definitely going to have a high chance of sweeping in previous generations where there was less power creep. But now, in this generation, even in, like, a wall-breaky, Dragonite-favorable meta, people are just completely throwing away the Pokemon with objectively bad movesets. Extreme Speed, 80 base power. That's low. You shouldn't need damage theory to tell you that's low. And then you have to go Terra Normal, so you're wasting your Terra. That could be used on other Pokemon. Or you're restricting power elsewhere on the Dragonite. You go Earthquake, and then you have, like, Roost Dragon Dance. I don't know how this became what people, like, thought was good in Dragonite. But I guess since uh, Dragapult is also a common Pokemon, that's trash. People just don't understand Pokemon anymore. So it looks like I'm the only person left trying to solve competitive Pokemon, trying to get an understanding and develop competitive strategy in Pokemon because the game is so dead. I I don't know, guys. So we have a dive to go in with Excalibur because, like, yeah, like, Dragonite should still be good. Just don't do extreme speed. You need Outrage still. And that's where Excalibur just has better Outrage with Glaive Rush that, for some reason, people are just afraid of using. And then you don't need Roost if you're one-shotting everything. So this opens up options of what walls you. So like, yeah, Dragonite should be succeeding. Why isn't Baxcalibur succeeding? But before we even get deeper into that, gotta plug G Fuel. Use code VELISFY, 20% off your G Fuel order. It's how I get energies for the content, for the theorycraft, for the battles. Comment your favorite G Fuel flavor down below or what flavor you plan on buying. Like, look at all this. We got some great stuff. Lime Margarita, Lemon Italian Ice, Cherry Slushy. Delicious. And people are asking, hey, what flavor should I get? If you see something you like, grab it because G Fuel is going to be tasty and it's going to give you the energy and focus you need. For whatever gaming or work-related task you are doing. Back to Vax Caliber. It's like, yeah, my thought is, how do we not just Dragon Dance? and then outspeed everything and Glaive Rush and win and just have enough natural durability. That's the big thing that inspired this video. It feels like the way people are using Baxcalibur is completely wrong. That with a change in how you approach this Pokemon, it actually just turns into one of the best sweeper Pokemon and gives you reliable 3-0 sweeps or something. Because yeah, this Pokemon's got a lot of weaknesses. Guess what? Terrestrialization means it doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. And my idea is you just Terra into something that doesn't share any of these weaknesses and now you just have a very tanky pokemon like 115 92 86 that's still valley damage analog and as we kind of show like that is what you need to achieve for pokemon but it means to get like a neutral ko on that you have to terra into the same type you have to use high base power you might even need to be choice or something and ba Bax caliber is already faster it's gonna be hard for a speedy pokemon to catch all of those stats or one shot you while you're setting up so Baxcalibur just comes in, goes into a different typing, if it's threatened. Like, if you don't see any super effective hits, you're surviving getting the Dragon Dance anyway, so what are you scared of? And then that's that's how you play it. Now, the only problem here is going to be priority, especially after using the Glaive Rush. But it doesn't seem like that's what's holding Baxcalibur People back. using Baxcalibur aren't having their sweep Uno reversed by a priority move or something. Also, it depends on, like, how you get yourself into that position. Because if you Dragon Dance into something that can just, like, revenge priority you or something... That might not be the play. Like, you just go for a one-shot on Glaive Rush that just might naturally exist into certain Pokemon. So my plan is just kind of build up the Baxcalibur into hopefully something that just seems incredible. Or maybe it will be exposed by damage theory. So, problem with Baxcalibur, it doesn't have an ability. Ice Body does nothing. Thermal Exchange doesn't turn fire into an immunity. And also kind of doesn't really matter. So Dragonite has multi-scale over it in exchange for the stats. But with Baxcalibur being tankier than Dragonite and not having a 4x weakness, you kind of just have the natural not getting one hit, which is kind of the purpose of multi-scale. I guess multi-scale also makes it harder for you to get revenged by a priority move. So why why is why are people going Terra Normal? Where's just the honest plus one Dragonite sweep? I don't know, that that's probably its own video, but let's let's talk about Baxcalibur and see if there's any room for Dragonite at the end to open up into another video. So, Baxcalibur. Max attack, 
adamant nature we're going to see if we need adamant or jolly nature because yeah like dragonite kind of struggles between going adamant or jolly let's just go jolly let's see like where our damage lies that means we need to pull up damage analog with Silvalli. blank set glaive rush is right here weird how like the pokemon showdown page is different every time i'm using the same screen region now that's decent damage on the back's caliber but we need to be one shotting and the plus one is where this gets weird for back scout because it's effectively like a choice band and that was my thought like if you just banded 145 with a 120 base power move you should just be winning but why is like why does back caliber's damage feel different like even jolly versus adamant adamant is a big tick up in the damage but again let's let's fo focus on jolly right now so like how does jolly 145 120 base power move banded not just like run over everything Okay, maybe, like, does Bax Caliber, like, the, is the 140-ish just kind of completely fraudulent in damage calculation? There's no saving it? Or maybe there's still some kind of angle here. Now, what I did say is you don't want to, like, share weaknesses. So, going Terra Dragon, that is going to tip everything over into insane one-shotting. Now, you just get run over by a Fairy-type Pokemon. Now, we haven't busted out the item yet, and that's also where things get weird. So, like, damage theory is just assuming that Life Orb is completely fraudulent on every Pokemon, except Bax caliber problem is though you're using setup so maybe that's another thing about life orb being fraudulent like yeah you're taking a hit if you take 60 70 percent well now that life orb becomes a detriment however if you're just trying to go for sweeps worst case scenario is two for one a bad case scenario is that you ko the opponent's last pokemon and then you die to recoil because you took 70 percent and then 10 10 10 and then okay i just win three three zero ish anyways so maybe you can get away with life form, and then like the damage becomes overwhelming, and you have some kind of Terra out, whatever typing you choose to just not retain a super effective move. And it's going to be hard for an opponent to find a strong enough hit into 115.92. Specs Iron Bundle is a pretty solid hit, and this kind of lands you in that range to where, okay, I take the max amount of damage from a timid Specs Iron Bundle. Well, I mean, I guess we're still just fine because we're at 23%. But then we're at 13%, we're at 3%, and then we win. So maybe the life orb is just fine here. I was also thinking about uh, the loaded dice, but loaded dice is not going to give us more damage on the icicle sphere. Because that's going to be like 125 max, which is the same as a glaive rush. So not nah, loaded dice also kind of just seems NT on this Pokemon. Like, why are people so scared of the glaive rush? It's better outrage. It you you just run everything over and it doesn't matter and if you just kind of ignore priority then you win you just beat but everything then that is where the meta gets weird because nor terra normal dragonite is terrible but it does kind of save you from getting three zero so maybe that's why it's so popular i don't even know like oh you offensive dragon dance for some reason, Smogon, Trash Kids, who are always running the heavy boots, even on Pokemon that can sustain themselves or whatever. But yeah, let's just go Extreme Speed. Seems like Adamant is common. We could go on the Pokemon Home. Give me a second. Wow, Dragonite has gone back to the number one most used Pokemon on the Battle Stadium. 77% Adamant, 25% Leftovers, with Leftovers being the highest. Pokemon is a mess. So maybe that's the point. Like, the Dragonite's terrible, it's not gonna like hard sweep you games, but it seems like it just kind of holds it down, because multi-scale, even the plus one Glaive Rush, yeah, that's not gonna be a KO. Extreme Speed after the Glaive Rush, also going to just kind of be a one-shot, even if you're factoring in like some kind of damage from Life Orb already, or if Bax Calibur took a hit while setting up the Dragon Dance, so is that just it? Like Dragonite is so common that Excalibur can't get off the ground. Also, we have some other Pokemon, which made me think like, okay, what if Excalibur goes something like fighting that then resists the Sucker Punch so you don't have that double damage? Well, then Fairy kind of bodies you still, and I just don't want to be in that situation to where, oh, I can't Terra out into something to ignore this Fairy typing. I'm just, just getting supered no matter what. Also, Sucker Punch is on 60% of Chain Pow, and it has the same amount of damage as Extreme Speed, so puts you in the same kind of situation. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those weird meta things. We're like, alright, can we just keep proving that Bax Calibur is good? Does everyone just put Bax Calibur in their sixth slot? And if you don't see, like, obvious priority, or maybe there's just a chance they don't bring Chain Pow Dragonite in 3v3? 
you you win because you set up against everything. All right, so let's go Jolly plus one. 228 speed. Adamant, 208 speed. So if you're going up against Chin Pao or even Iron Bundle, Adamant actually gives you the outspeed on plus one. Game Freak in their weird little stat creep and all the weird little implications that come out from that. Like just giving a random 136 is actually bodied 85 because now you speed tie or actually lose on an 85. And then you speed tie 135, which is common now with Chin Pao and Fluttermane. So yeah, that, that hasn't gotten too great, but at least we got the 87. So we clear that. But then Jolly is also where things get weird because that gives us the outspeed into the Dragapult. And it would be sad because if you're like going adamant to then lose to the worst pseudo legendary pokemon so i guess we'll just go like random choice specs so that's gonna be timid and then we drop it down to level 50 and yeah 213 so that also gives us a little bit of room to where we go this oh we can actually keep so going 76 hit point evs is going to give us 10 more health at level 50 so like five percent extra durability I don't know if it matters, like, if you're losing games by that much, then maybe it does and you put that in. But I guess you just go max attack, max speed, jolly nature, you plus one, you still have the damage to KO everything on the glaive rush, and then you're good to go. Now, what about when you can't glaive rush? Uh, Earthquake, good option into steel-type Pokemon, also rock-type Pokemon. So let's see what that looks like into Garganasalt, uh, OU Curse mixed spread defensive nature that actually seems fine so our earthquake wow really wait we need to put our life orb back on see I, i'm i'm feeling the life orb but the life orb still isn't enough also just kind of like shows weird damage interactions and calculations with like glaive rush and stuff but yeah very bulky pokemon you want to get that super effective hit onto it and then terra ground just as an idea just as a little experiment as a little thought actually one shot so you go terra ground with the plus one earthquake onto garganosol boom that's just a ko so that kind of like covers for everything you would want it to cover um iron head gets weird i'm just gonna pull out like default uh fairy type pokemon and if we go level 50 okay so it takes like a full hit point almost full defense tank sylveon to survive the plus one iron head with life orb Life Orb doesn't seem fraudulent here, and that feels weird to say. Also, Terra Ground doesn't seem fraudulent here, which seems like it's completely wrong because Terra Ground was just a complete meme in the first couple seasons, like before we got Regulation C and Regulation D and like Paradox and Legendary Pokemon and transfers and stuff. Like, it, it just wasn't good, so it, it couldn't get any better by bringing in more Pokemon. But it seems like it just covers, and maybe this is just everyone running it wrong. They're loaded dice. They're immediate mega into Terra Ground and using Earthquake instead of Glaive Rush and just having no damage. Also, for some reason, they wouldn't be Dragon Dancing, so they're just kind of like losing damage and are easy to set up on. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's the right Baxcalibur that's just been played completely wrong by everyone in Pokemon. And that's a level of audacity that even I'm having a hard time trying to, like, justify. But we've seen it before. Pokemon Unite is still an undeveloped scene, even two years later, where, like, the top play is still a complete joke and looks laughably unskilled by any MOBA or competitive gaming standards, and we're still in the middle of the Verlicify Always Right tour when it comes to everyone at Smogon being wrong and all the ban logic just being lies. So, like, like what is it? Because if you go Terra Ground, that passes this test. Where, like, yeah... If you just read your opponent correctly and you understand like what they want to throw at you, barring the 3% chance they're going to have the 1% Terra and predict you with a Terra Water, you, you just go Terra Ground only when you need to, not forcing it, and then that preserves your Terra to maybe come back just in case Baxcalibur fails, and now you get the Dragon Dance. You just have the bulk to survive everything neutral, and then... You go Terra Ground with the Earthquake, because that's just damage when you can't throw it on the Glaive Rush. And then we have Iron Head, and at that point, the only Pokemon that stops you is going to be uh, Corviknight, which is actually a problem. So, like, it seems like this isn't the beats every Pokemon Pokemon, but it has to be one of the better sweepers once you get plus uh, one. What if we don't go Terra Ground? We go Terra Electric with the Terra Blast. Wow. Hmm, 
That's interesting. Uh, also, same thing on Terra Fire, so I don't know what's better, which means type coverage. So all right, type coverage. I feel like we need the steel for fairy type Pokemon, and if we're not one-shotting a Garganosaur, probably not the end of the world, even though it doesn't feel too great. So Dragon Steel means we get walled out by steel type Pokemon, and then some other weird stuff. Uh, the King Gambit's something we need to deal with. We go electric for the Corviknight, and then we still kind of don't have hits. Actually, wait, it's all steel type Pokemon. So Terra Fire, Terra Fire, Terra Blast. Fax Caliber, Dragon Steel Fire, perfect coverage. It doesn't completely follow the rules, but who's running offensive rock? No one. All right. Maybe, maybe we, maybe, maybe people were close. Like, I feel like the Terra Ground with this strategy, actually strong. Terra Fire, though. Maybe that's the sauce. Maybe, maybe that's how you win it. You hit everything neutral, and unless it's a pure defense tank that you don't have a super effective hit on, you're going to be fine. But then we're kind of trading one problem for another. Dondozo, yeah, we want to hit that. But then we're kind of trading one problem for another. Uh, Terra Blast does two-shot the Dondozo with Electric, and if we're fire, then that's not going to help. But Glaive Rush is a three-hit KO. However, Dondozo kind of wants to be in that situation. Uh little ugly so yeah it seems like no matter what you just can't wipe out everything which is kind of the dream of damage theory where you just find a pokemon where it's like yeah my, my perfect coverage at a plus one just just kind of bodies everything the neutrals get one shot and then we we can kind of round out and super effective anything else not not vax caliber though i mean i don't know what to take away from it though the the answer does sound like yo you set this thing up and you can just find an out if not a pretty common 3-0 sweep. Why isn't it doing that? Like, there, there isn't problems with the Terra Ground Earthquake, it seems. Terra Fire, Terra Blast might be the pure optimization, but if it's that good, it shouldn't be far off anyways. Or maybe, somehow, I'm like the first person to actually think about Bax Caliber in a strategic enough way to make it work. Like, you can't just pick it up and run, run it down with it, but it kind of seems like you can. And maybe there is some team building here that really seals the deal for Baxcalibur to where like, okay, you switch out into some kind of like sustainy tank, maybe you chip away at the opponent a little bit here and there, you make one of Baxcalibur's counters uncomfortable, or maybe remove it from the game by playing out your other like tank core and then Baxcalibur comes in for the 2-0 and it's a, an easy win condition to set up for that it kind of has the technical play of last respects but in like a different kind of way. It's where like, yeah, we're just here for the Bax Caliber 2-0 once we remove the counter. And if you play the 2v1 strategically enough, you just open up the 99% win con for Bax Caliber if you are a skilled enough player. But since the game is dead, there's no skilled players that are able to accomplish this anymore. And maybe that's the problem. And worst case scenario, you just rock up into any sweeping Pokemon and you one shot it on Life Orb Glaive Rush. So damage theory not being fraudulent here in a weird kind of way. So you trade one for one in a lot of situations. That's kind of thing like wall break backs caliber has always felt pretty viable, especially when we're such like a tanky anti-tank filth disgusting meta outside of like the paradox Pokemon and not Dra Dragonite's weird. I don't know what's called Dragonite anymore. So with all of that kind of coming to play, like why wasn't this the backs caliber? that just dunked on everything in season one. No one really like picks up on the damage theory. I don't build this and then Battle Stadium gets flooded with like 500 people testing the strat and then like mopping the floor with Japanese players or something. It's just like people go like, yes, this knowledge will go somewhere in my brain to maybe never be used again because Pokemon is dead, but at least it's interesting to think about Pokemon. Like, no, you're supposed to apply this. You're supposed to do something with it. But no one has that drive in Pokemon like we saw with Pokemon X and Y, the renaissance of Pokemon, or at least the, hey, I can do something cool in Pokemon X and Y and then like feel for Fan Fridays, even if like you're not doing it for Fan Fridays or something. People cared and tried to battle. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm like, yeah, everyone's wrong about Baxcalibur. They're too unskilled to play it. There's two viable ways, one of them being common to run it. This might just win the game. But I'm I'm just I'm I'm shouting into the void at this point because no one's going to do anything with it. 
no matter what options are available. Whatever, I'm having fun being the best competitive Pokemon player ever, understanding more than anyone else, and maybe, maybe one day it'll come back around if we have a second renaissance of Pokemon. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching. Wait a second. I might have done it. I might have actually brought it all together for the Baxcalibur. So first, I went, wait a second, Bolt Beam, Glaive Rush, pretty much the same thing. Maybe it's meta dependent. Terra Electric on that Terra Blast, Icicle Crash. I think I've seen a Terra Electric Baxcalibur in one of my hundreds of nonsense battles in Generation 9. Maybe it wasn't Dragon Dance and it was still just like loaded dice or something. Icicle Crash having a 10% chance to just ruin your sweep, not cool. The power, not cool, but again, it adds into like stab bolt beam shenanigans. So maybe there's some viability there. Or we go back to the Terrifier. We go back to the Earthquake because my, I, I, I didn't realize something. Like, why are we scared of fairies if we're going fire and then we resist them? So we actually don't need to one shot them with the Iron Head. Or it's like at least not as dire and maybe we can still find like a good hit pickup or something uh but terrifier does mean like glaive rush doesn't have that super effective hit then i realized something chat what is a dragon fire pokemon that dragon dances <sighs> how is bax caliber not good when it's exactly Mega Charizard X. It's stronger Mega Charizard X. Same physical durability, better special durability. This 100 speed doesn't matter in the meta because like we showed, Jolly outspeeds everything. Maybe the difference is you get to go Adamant, but then I think it's same damage, right? So let's go level 50, Adamant 130 versus Jolly 145, 200, 197. It's... It's just Charizard X. Because you go Dragon Dance, and then you go Dragon Claw. So it's better because the Glaive Rush hits harder. Flare Blitz, that gets kind of kind of sketchy, though. Could, could KO yourself, especially after the Dragon Dance setup. And then they ran Earthquake, because you had, like, the most insane coverage here. So we get the same most insane coverage. Life Orb is just Tough Claws. So we're trading, like, having no item for having no ability. And it's Mega Charizard X.